Hi guys, how's it? Welcome trick mall to everyone around the world. Obviously, I'm shooting this intro separately, a, a ton attached to the interview that I just did today. We had Bradley Gibson. This guy is massively huge on TikTok. We'll post a video, but I just want to thank everybody for continuing to support this channel. We've got Test Rugby back this Saturday. Man. I'm excited. Obviously, you guys also know what I'm also excited about that's happening tomorrow. This is my last video I will be posting as a non-married man. So uh, I hope everybody enjoys it, enjoys the little chit-chat that I had here with Bradley. And go follow him. I will leave the link to his TikTok underneath. And until next time, hopefully we'll be doing a post, post-Springbok victory video this time. Who am I talking about? Of course we are. Box are going to destroy Wales. He even admits it in the interview. Cheers, guys. Marlborough Park Wednesday. It's very delicious. Well, here he is, folks. If you liked that TikTok clip, uh, this is the man behind it, Bradley or Brad. Do you go by Bradley or Brad? Uh, it's either or, whichever you prefer, to be honest. Okay, we'll call him Bradley. He is absolutely hilarious on TikTok. I enjoyed it. He touched base. He was real heavy during the Six Nations, and uh, he is back. And we are here to talk Welsh rugby, man. Welcome to the show, bro. I'm, I'm I'm glad you chose me. <laughs> the pleasure's all mine. Thank yeah, so it's. I I absolutely enjoyed uh, the jersey swap videos you did. I I thought that was very. And then, obviously, not the the greatest Six Nations performance by your boys this year. You you, you kept it through. I love the Welsh the the wooden spoon where you're like sleeping. <laughs> oh, I like that one. <laughs> that, so. Do you, do you do the TikToks? Is this like, are you trying to go somewhere? Or is this just a hobby for you, man? It's it's honestly just a hobby. I mean, if it does go somewhere, awesome. But I'm not actively trying to make it something, if that makes sense. Oh, I totally understand. Um, so, did you play rugby growing up in Wales? Of Co course I did, yeah. Of course. What position, what position were you? I'll let you take a guess. <laughs> uh gonna say maybe a center or a wing maybe fullback I like that. yeah i like that yeah um i mean i like to swap between two so i was a winger okay but i'm also a scrum half you're you're back so i i'm Another the fat boy. i'm the fat boy i had to play hooker so that yeah. was kind of <laughs> how it worked um with the year the way it went obviously uh i, I want to kind of start out with I don't follow Welsh rugby. I because I'm a Southern Hemisphere guy. We were hearing all kinds of things about a pops, possible player strike. What was going on with all of that? It's 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 touchy, and I think there is still some problems with it. Um, basically, the main issue with that, and I, I sorry if I get things wrong. I'm not hundred percent on it. No, no. But, but the main issue was players normally they'll have contracts ready like by the start of the season. Um, but then players were going towards the half halfway through the season and they they don't know whether they're going to have a job by the end of the season. So players were getting worried and nobody's getting signed and there's just absolute chaos. And that's why players, they, they were threatening to strike. Um, like, And I think this was the whole time that Netflix were trying to film the Six Nations. And if you actually watched the documentary... The first two games aren't in it, and that's the reason because of how chaotic it was. But the main issue was players were saying, "Well, you know what? I, I'm not going to do anything. Then if I don't have a job, what, what what's the point?" Yeah, yeah. So it was really down to finances, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was um, like a financial issue, like the main issue. But I think it was just problems getting people signed. Um, so and and it wasn't just like one or two; it was everyone. Wow. Um, so we think about where Wales rugby was six years ago. Uh, we think about the 2019 World Cup. I wore the jersey just because um, that was 
that was Wales going in at, at peak. Going into that tournament, they were at peak. It was high end, obviously making the semifinal, almost making it to the end. Warren Gatlin decides when he's done, he's going to step down. He goes back to New Zealand for a bit and then ends up coming right back to Wales. Yep. Um, you kind of talked about the issues with the contracts and things. I went back and looked at that that 2018 game. This was the last time I believe you beat the Springboks. It was Rassi Erasmus's first game. You had beaten the Springboks. I, I know what game you're on about, yes. Okay. Three times in a row. Three times in a row. It was the last time Peter Steph to toy captain the side. And I'm looking I looked at the roster. We have six guys coming back for this game. You have two. Uh, <laughs> Kate, 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 right. do you know do you know who they are? Uh, I'm I'm trying to think who's on the squad. Is, we, well, are they on. starting or are they on in the squad completely? I don't know if you'll be able to see that too well. Um it is I want to say Liam Williams is one. No. He's not. No. Um, then I'm not too sure then. Who who's on the squad? It was Wainwright. Wainwright your, your number eight. And Watkin at 13. He played at oh, 12 that, in that game. Now that shocks me. I can't remember the squad back then, but I wouldn't have fought them. I would have thought Williams would play, but never mind. No, did not play in that game. And and it just kind of shows you. I mean, you bring up you know, Alan Wynn Jones, one of my favorite locks in history, one of the guys that I is one of those guys on the list, like with Jonah Lomu, of guys that should have won a World Cup and never did just because he played for so long. He did the British and Irish Lions tour. He was just a and he's done. Two brick, done. Bigger, done. Uh is is Falatau done or is he just injured? Um he's injured at the minute. I I I can't see him playing um, much, much more for, for Wales again because of how much talent we have in the back row. Anyway, I I feel like even if he is eligible eligible to play again, I just think there are these youngsters that are actually are, are doing him now. Yeah, it's that, not that I'm saying he's bad because Falter is a world class player, and you know, everyone yeah. would say that he's, he is. He's awesome, but like we got the likes of like Wainwright is in the best form he's ever been, and we got Jack Morgan. We, you know, we got so many players in the back row to choose from now. We got Tommy Rafael. Uh, we, we got a, a big choice of selection to put in those areas, and you know he's, he's getting on a bit, you know. So yeah, maybe it's, it's maybe time to step down. He's one of those guys that I'll be completely honest with you. Um, I remember, I guess he made his debut in what maybe 2011, 2012? Yeah, it's definitely over ten years. Yeah, yeah. So I remember seeing him and thinking, oh, he's a Tongan kid. Whatever, yeah. you know, I mean, you get used to seeing it with the with the with the all blacks in Australia and everything. And then I find an interview with him and I'm like, son of a he <laughs> has a Welsh accent like he sounds Welsh. And like then Crazy. all my mates are like, he's been there since he was six, man. This isn't this isn't a James Lowe or Gibson Park situation. This guy was born and ra he was raised there. I'm like. Touche, yeah. touche, yeah. you know, like you actually sound like a Welshman. You don't even sound um, with with all the eligibility requirements that that different countries will have. Like, obviously, for Ireland, you have to play rugby in Ireland, England. You have to play in England. What are the requirements for Wales? Like, can you play outside of Wales or do you have to play in Wales to play for Wales? It's I think it's touchy. Um, if. If you if you start in Wales and mm -hmm. then like do like a few appearances and then go outside of Wales, you are now ineligible to play for Wales, which sucks. It's that's a stupid um, thing. But the the problem with getting people to play for like in Wales is the finances. There's no money in the, like the Welsh clubs at the minute. So why do I understand completely why people want to go elsewhere? And there's, that's why there's so many like Welsh boys. Playing for like all these like French teams and like all yeah, these yeah. French teams, and because that's where the money is. Um, but it's just, just uh, it used to be like sixty plus caps before you could um play for Wales uh, like outside of Wales, which was mm -hmm. stupid, and it got reduced to twenty five. And even then, I think that's ridiculously high anyway, only because of the financial issues. Because why do you, you want to play yeah. in Wales if, yeah. if, if there's no money there and you're not making enough to be like you know settled settling yeah. in? 
I, th- I think it's an issue that the Irish stress about, the Scottish stress about, the English stress about. And obviously, it's because you have a country just across the water from you paying massive contracts in France. And I, I can get that. Obviously, South Africa does not have that anymore. Uh, New Zealand still has it. And I guarantee you, before the next World Cup, that'll be over for New Zealand. They won't have any choice because of the same thing. It's about money. You need to make money and you're not going to make it staying in New Zealand. And, you know, I think you're going to eventually see that's going to go away for a lot of the countries that still have it. In my, just in my personal opinion, I think it'll eventually go away. Um, furthermore on that, I, I worry about the day that America gets into it because you see the sporting contracts we offer in this country to players. A, mil- a million dollars in, isn't much for a, an athlete here. That's and that would be more than they'd make anywhere else. So yeah, definitely. Um, so let's look. We looked at the past. We've got Warren Gatlin back in. Obviously, we saw the struggles of the Six Nations, and we saw your club struggles in the URC a bit. And now you're looking forward to obviously this first test outside of the the international window, and then a trip to Australia. But first, we got to get through this test. Um, I guess the interesting stat is that Eben Etzebeth has more caps than your entire team combined. I was just about to say that. He's got, what, 119? 119. That's amazing, man. That is that is good. And as I'm looking at this roster, I see a familiar name at number six. Plumtree. Yeah. His dad is currently coaching the Sharks in Durban and South Africa. And I had to look at this guy. Apparently, he was born in Wales. Yeah. While his dad was coaching there. And then yeah. he's also eligible to play for South Africa because his mother is South African. It's just, rugby's you, getting, it's getting crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, you stole one away. Um, obviously, it's a very young team. Very, very young team. You've got on and said, hey, we've got a chance here. We've got a chance here. What is it on this team that thinks, hey, we've got a legitimate chance here? What are some of the guys here on this roster that you think, hey, these guys, don't don't write them off? I'm I'm quite liking uh, Wayne Wright's performance uh, at the minute. I think he is in the... the, the um... Well, well, I think he's, a, he's, he's peaking. I think he's in the prime. That's what is I'm he saying. the prime of his he's career? Prime. Yeah, I think he's, he's doing really well at the minute. Um, the forwards, I, I'm quite liking all the forwards, to be honest. The whole back row, like I said earlier, we've got so much selection. Um, I think our back row is, is pretty solid. But then you can't write off the spring box forwards. So, um, But uh, I, I quite like Dyer as well at the minute. Dyer's form is really good. Um, uh, but I, I was really hoping for a Jack Morgan masterclass, but he's been ruled out now. And that was yeah, that, the that only just came out. That was, I was clutching at straws. I was like, if if someone's going to do it, it's going to be Jack Morgan. <laughs> and he's been ruled out. And I, I just remember reading it on Instagram and I was pulling my hair out like this. And I was going, no! So I don't know what the score's going to be now. It's going to look like a cricket game, to be honest. Um, I, to the I, I honestly don't think... I, I picked 42-12 is what I went with, which isn't a cricket score quite, quite. Yeah. Speaking of which, I, I do have to bring up USA eliminated by South Africa by 19 runs, unfortunately. First World Cup. Um, I actually went to my very first Cricket World Cup game a couple of weeks ago here. They had a game here in uh, yeah. Dallas-Fort Worth. So um, don't know if you're a big cricket fan. I, I am casually a cricket fan. But um, so with that being said, I, I told you my love of Warren Gatland. I think he is an absolute amazing coach. Um, I don't know if you've heard my theory about him going back to New Zealand and why he didn't stick around. I didn't know. For, where, for when where, 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 where was Steve Hansen before he coached the All Blacks? Oh, correct. Oh, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Where was, right. Graham, where was Han- Graham Henry before he coached the All Blacks? Oh, okay, it's all adding up now. What Wales is the pipeline. I think yeah. personally, he went back to New Zealand. They offered him the job. They told him he had to give up the 2021 British and Irish Lions tour. And he said no because of the paycheck. And they gave it to Ian Foster. That's, I, I still believe that to this day, he was meant to be it. But 
with that being said, he's back in Wales. Do you, how how do how do you as a rugby fan and how does the Welsh rugby as a public do they really still put their support behind him? It's uh, what I see as a. But I'm a rugby fan. I know I'm like very Welsh biased anyway. But I'm like, I am a rugby fan. Like I support any team. So mm-hmm. if we even if Wales lose, I I don't care. Like I just like the fact I love the sport. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously I care if we lose, but. I, I'm not like bummed out by it. I'm like, oh god, we get him next time, whatever. I got that kind of attitude, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't really put it into words. Like, do you want to see results this summer, or is it like, hey, look, if it's not better by next Six Nations, I want changes. I, I quite like Pivak, to be honest. Um, when Pivak. I, I quite liked him. He did really well for Scarlet, which is my local your, club your team. team. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought he did really well. Um, I don't think he had long enough to get given a chance, if that makes sense. And they gave the job right back to Gatland. Yeah. And they gave the job back to Gatland whilst everything is going through all this was, chaotic was, mess. Yeah, was falling apart. Um, well, I don't think you have the greatest chance this Saturday. You do have a great chance this summer in your tour to uh, another program that is going through upheaval as we speak, and that would be Australia. Um, I do think you have a serious chance. Are you are you looking forward to that series as well? I think we have a better chance in Australia <laughs> than in Twickenham. I'll, I'll be that honest. Um, and then obviously we got Queensland Reds at the end. Um, yeah, I feel like, in my personal opinion, we'll beat Queensland Reds. Um, I think it'll be one all. To be honest, think you think so? One, and they'll win think... one, yeah. I um, I lived in Australia for a year, and uh, I saw this coming from a a mile away. I knew this was what was going to happen for them. Uh, they they have too many sports in Australia. They they yeah. have AFL, they have league, they have car dream. Yeah, they're they're into everything in Australia. They got their fingers in everything, and I knew. When you have 20 years of dominance from your next door neighbor, it's only a matter of time before the kids are like, yeah, I don't want to play that any, yeah. anymore. So uh, I do think, yes, I think one one and one is a, is a fair assumption. Um, so as I've been online and talking to rugby fans all around, we always seem to I, I, I actually have never have anything negative to say about Wales. The, the Springboks always seem to say we're a really hard team to beat, which is very... It's weird, cool. right? It's weird. Yeah. It's like the one team where there's never any back talk between each other. Well, like... we, go, we go back to the 2019 World Cup where Wales lost by one point to the Springboks, which was in the semi-final. I yeah. honestly think Wales and the Springboks were neck and neck in level. I genuinely, if, we, if Wales beat... The spring box. I think Wales would have won the World Cup. Uh, I agree. I think that's how close they were. I think you would have beat the brakes off of England too, just like I mean, yeah, we, just we would like have won as well. And I think everyone knew that. And I think I genuinely think England wanted the spring box to win because they thought they were going to smoke the spring box. But obviously, I genuinely think that was our final for Wales. To be honest, it, it's it's just really odd that that's the one team where we never really have anything negative to say. As Springbok yeah. fans, we don't, we never talk bad about Wales for some reason. And I think it's kind of just, it's a mutual respect for the programs. Uh, but as a Welsh fan, as a Six Nations fan, who is your ire bigger towards England or Ireland? Or is it France or is it Scotland or is what, it Italy? The, what like, was the question? Who, who, who do you? I guess who is the opponent you dislike the most uh, internationally? Oh, you 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 put it in Spanish and works here now. <laughs> um, if it wasn't an obvious answer, I think it's everyone against England. Yeah, that's okay. I want to make sure that we're we're on that same page with that too. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and I'm not gonna slag them off or anything, but yeah, it's definitely that everybody is hating the one team everyone wants to beat. And I think I think Wales and England rivalries go past the sport of rugby as well. So even and it's always like neck and neck with Wales and England. So 
when we beat them, we take the piss of them, and then when they beat us, they take the piss of us. But it's always like banter. But yeah, there's a huge rivalry between us two compared to like the other teams. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it's. I I agree. Um, are you gonna go to the game on Saturday? I'm going. Yeah, I'm very how, excited. How long of a train ride is that from where you live to to London? The train ride is about four hours, but I'm driving down, so it'll be like three and a half, maybe just less. Only because I'm going away on the same day. So I'm going there, and then I'm going down to Cornwall on the same day. So I'm going to have a long day. Three, is three and a half hours a long drive for you? Three, uh, well, it's three and a half to get to London. I watch okay. all the games, and then it's I think it's four and a half from London down to Cornwall. I've gotten so used to living here that like that that that's not that bad of a drive. Like I was gonna say, uh, so the, I, yeah, go on. Sorry. No, no. I I can drive ten hours west of where I'm at, and I'm still in Texas. Yeah. I can drive ten hours south, and I'm still in Texas. Now, if I want to go to Oklahoma, it's forty five minutes away. It's just right up the road, but. I think that's for Americans. They don't get like I lived in Bulgaria for a year and you could be in like four different countries in an hour and a half. Like that's yeah. how small it was. But so you're going to make the drive to the game. Is it has it sold out? I don't think so. I don't think it will. Um, considering there's two games on. Uh, I don't think it will. To be are you going to stay, yeah. stay for the Fiji and Babas game? Or are you going to? Yes, I'm going to watch the two. Yeah. Sam Whitelock, Sam yeah. Whitelock's last game. I can't wait. I, I'm, a, I like I said, I'm a rugby fan, so I'll watch it too, and I'll enjoy the both. But I'm really excited for that Fiji game as well because I, in the World Cup, Fiji were like my fan favorites. They were the team I'd really enjoyed watching. Uh, so mine, excited. mine was Tonga. Mine was Tonga. I always yeah. like watching Tonga play, and uh, Chile, surprisingly, I knew they're starting hooker because he played here for a year and I uh, was real happy for them. With the expansion of the tournament in three years, they're adding four four more teams, I believe. I think so, yeah. Four, another, another group in it or something like that. I think this is a horrible idea because I don't I think agree. you're... You're not adding four Fijis. You're adding four Namibias is what you're adding. Exactly. It just... It gets more people into the quarter quarterfinals that deserve it. So, for example, Scotland, who's like barely getting into it, it gives Should've, them a chance yeah. to get into it, which is it gives them credibility for for not actually doing anything. And I and I still don't think Ireland get past it. Then that's just, <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. um, what you guys are going through right now. Obviously, the turnover. You've got like I said, Dan Bigger, all these guys. They've aged out. They're kind of moving on. This is. You've got three years to get these young guys and get it figured out. What would you like to see? Do you want to be? Do you want to be right back in the mix in three years in Australia? Would you like to be right back? Like, yeah, hey, we got a we got a serious chance here. Or are you going to be like, no, I just want to see development. Uh, I I I do think in three years, I think we got a good chance. I feel like if you look at the performances in uh, over the World Cup that Wales had, they were great performances. Obviously, we had a couple of games like, oh, Christ. Um, but those were youngsters making small mistakes, but we were still winning games. Yeah, so, yeah. And these youngsters, in, well, from then was four years. From three years from now, those youngsters, are they're going to be pretty good. I... I... I still think it's kind of odd that you guys do blood your guys at a fairly young age, like 21, 22, 23, as opposed to the spring box where it's a lot of 25, 26, 27 year old debuts. So I think going for, yeah, I think that is a, a legitimate, you do have a young squad here. Um, the, the thing is our problem was everyone retired at the same time. Everyone turnover, retired. high turnover, high turnover. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you heard the news this week. It looks like Stuart Hogg is coming out of retirement. Obviously not going to play for Scotland again. Yeah. How would you feel if... Yeah. How would you feel if Alan Wynne-Jones decided to suit back up? Uh, (laughs) um, I still feel like he was, like, a really good lock, even when he was, like, in his last, like, 
a couple of he years. Got, he got real injury prone there towards the end, though. And yeah, I think of course he did. Yeah, he was, what was he, like 38, 39 when he retired? So you, you could understand that, but I don't think he'll come back. He's got his uh, his rum drink company, you know. He's, he's doing all right. He's loving life. Uh, I think he's quite happy to take a, set, a step back. Well, I do have a few more questions for you, and then we'll end this one. Uh, one of the big things I think I want to ask is, obviously, here in America, we don't have a – like, if you look at the history of the president, there's been a lot of Welsh presidents in this country, Welsh origin. And something I did want to ask, the Welsh language. Oh, God. <laughs> how, much of the population, how much of the population can actually speak it? It's not a lot. Um Be- because they use it on the field. They use it on the field. I've seen them do it. Uh, just... It's definitely something. It's on the rise, which is good. Is it? Like, when I was in school, it wasn't mandatory. Uh, but I feel like it should be because I can't speak Welsh, but I wish I did. Um, and it's definitely something I want to learn or, like over over time. Um, but I feel like it's something we need to do as a country. Um, but also, as you said, like on the pitch, the other players aren't going to know what you're saying. No, so, no. it's... Why aren't we doing it? Uh, I just noticed that the first time I ever saw your lineup sheets, how everything is bilingual. On and I, and I think, honestly, for somebody, not just because I live in America now, but I mean, I grew up in Canada where it was bilingual as well. South Africa with a, 11 languages. It's cool to see everything in two languages. I just know yours is like the one I can. I, I can sort of pick up bits of like Irish. I can pick up certain things. I understand but- no Welsh. Welsh is chaotic. whatsoever. <laughs> what so? Not a single word. Like yeah, it's it's mental. So, it do you like any sports outside of rugby? I'm a big boxing fan. Really big boxing fan. Massive. Love boxing. You can see that right there. I've got a pair of gloves on me. Yeah. Yeah. My my uncle. My uncle boxed. Um. Wow, boxing, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I like boxing. Um obviously football is probably the most popular sport in Wales, I would imagine, right? It's weird because rugby is like our national sport. Like if you're Welsh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, you play rugby? Uh, and that's like general general conversation starters. But mm-hmm. football is on the rise and it is slowly starting to become bigger than rugby. I still think rugby is bigger. Mm-hmm. But there's, it's going to be not long where football is overtaken. Well, speaking of which, there is a reality TV series that started here in America in the last two years about a Welsh football team. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, Ryan Reynolds, and they yeah. bought some. And I guess apparently the team has moved up fairly well. But yeah, they moved up a tier, didn't they? Yeah. So division with that. So it's 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 boxing and rugby. Have you ever been to a, to a Cardiff Devils game? No, I want to. I do want to. Don't tell me you've been. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've, I've never played. been to Wales. I've never been to Wales. I know three boys that played or who played there this last season, though. That's that's yeah. my back. Ice hockey is my background. Um, right. Yeah, never been to Wales. It's kind of, oh, here's something else I wanted to bring up. And I've asked the Scots and the Irish this. I'm going to ask a Welshman this. So from the outside looking in, okay, you have the URC and you have the Premiership. Why are the Scottish teams and the Welsh teams not in the league with the country they share an island with? Like, I feel like they should be playing in the Premiership, not in the URC, which is Ireland and Italy and so. Do you know why that is? Because I've had English people tell me it's because they think you suck. I've had Scottish people say it's a money, it's a money thing. It's a money thing, is what it is. They Definitely. don't want to. You think so? Yeah, financial. Yeah. Um, I I always say, whenever this question comes up, I always say, well, like you said, with Scotland as well. Uh, I always say, get a Welsh team in the Prem, just one or two. One, just yeah. one would be awesome. Yeah. That'd be great for Wales because the Prem is huge. Um, just like, do you know, like the football prem? Yeah, yeah, the premier. So yeah, got Cardiff and Swans in there. Honestly, oh, was, just, you you play in the Barclays Premiership, and the, the top is that for who, football? Yeah, is that Barclays who sponsors it, or is it not? I I'll be honest, I'm useless to football. I'm crap. I okay. I don't have okay. a clue. 
But there I know go. that Cardiff and Swansea are both in the English Prem, or however it goes. I might be wrong. Yeah. I'm going to get slated for that, I think. But um, I know they play in an English tournament or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But I always say, get a Welsh team in the, in the English Rugby Premiership. That will be the way forward. And not just Wales. Irish, get an Irish team in there. Get a Scottish team in there. Leave, leave them leave them Scottish folks to their own. <laughs> <laughs> but I genuinely, like, because we're all getting these Welsh boys jump ship to the English Premier and we play for a different team. So just get a Welsh team in there. Just Speak, get some I, money into it and just 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 get it up back. I genuinely think we'd be class if we had a full Welsh squad at back. So somebody sent me a photo that I had never seen before. The Funapola brothers in red shirts. All right. I hadn't. I had no idea they had Welsh eligibility and played for. I, I didn't know that until I seen something the other day. Yeah, like I was like, "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, that's that's apparently Falatau. They're all cousins." And it was yeah. like, "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, they were actually raised there. They didn't grow up in England." And I'm like, "Damn, could you yeah, have imagined? Related? It's crazy. Could you have imagined if all three of those guys played? Dude, you guys would have won a World Cup. No, no, no." No Honestly, <laughs> we would have won that 2019 one, man. I'm telling you, but uh, you ripped it away from us. <laughs> uh, I, I, I still like. Look, I, I've I've had to admit it on many times. I did not pick the Springboks in 2019. I did not pick them. I picked the All Blacks. I thought they were going to three peat. They were just solid, despite uh, the hiccups that they had had. I was at that second uh, British and Irish Lions test in Wellington. It was cold and rainy as hell. Alan Wynne Jones was up to his old tricks. I loved it. <laughs> Pissing yeah. everyone off, like, because that's what he was good at. Uh, I think Falatau played that game. I don't think Bigger did. I'm trying to think who all, what all Welshmen were on that that team. There were quite a quite a few. Cause Gatlin, yeah, obviously. Gatlin was very favorite for the Welsh. Uh, I well, think he was I don't blame him. Starting them. to get like um, it, it. It was fair in that one, but it was still heavily Welsh sided. But like the years before that, it was mainly Welsh people. So, but that that was um, there was a few Welsh boys. I think Gareth Davis maybe was on. Yeah, D- Gareth was yes. Um, of this squad that you have right now, how many of those guys do you reckon get picked for British? For the Lions 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 well, with the with the lineup this weekend. Um, uh, I would have Jack Morgan definitely gets a start. Definitely, yes, one hundred percent. But we need to see, you know, if he's not injured. If he's not injured, um, I I'll be honest. There's not a lot of people. I think David Jenkins gets in there. I agree. I agree. Um, um do you think it's going to be an overly heavy Irish squad because of Farrell? I don't think so. I I feel like it'll be, do you know, like Gatland chose, like he chose more Welsh than, I think it will be that kind of because he knows them and he's got a yeah, lot of chemistry yeah. with them. But I don't think it'll be overly, uh, over, overly done. Like, because I do think there are a lot of talent in each nation. So definitely, definitely. He'll, have, he'll be spoiled for choice. I, I, I still wonder if Farrell comes back to England if he selects his own damn son. And if he does that, <laughs> yeah. I am gonna That's give him so I'm gonna give him so much hell for that. I'm gonna give him yeah. so much hell for that. But so obviously big weekend of rugby coming up with this test. The summertime. I know you guys are going through a bit of a heat wave there. We've seen it on the news. Um yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I hope you guys. I know it's not like it is here where we have air conditioning everywhere. Like you have no. to have it here. We're we're pretty good down here. Like um, it is hot, like, but it's not that bad. I think it'll get hotter again towards like July what, and August. Like like, what's the current temperature you reckon there? Um, it's like in its twenties. So it's not not that bad. Thirty seven. That's what it is here right now. Yeah, we we I don't yeah. even think we even get close to that. Yeah, we'll 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 peak out in late July, early August around 48, 49. It'll be if you leave your car out, you go to get in your car, it'll be 52, 53 when you get in your car. It's yeah. it's 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 bad. It's bad. But once again, follow this guy. I will leave the link under the video. His TikToks are hilarious. Not even just hilarious, but super creative. 
Huge Welsh rugby fan. Wish you all the luck. Wish the Welsh boys the best of luck on Saturday and throughout the summer as they head to the land down under. Uh, hopefully they don't get uh, eaten by alligator or crocodiles or... Um, <laughs> I never saw any of those there. I did see kangaroos, and they are scary as hell. And are they are they massive? Are they are they like so? Yeah. They're <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're big, and they and they yeah. don't like to be bothered too much. Um, I was there for a year. My daughter was in year one of school, so grade one, and it was yeah, it was an intense, intense experience, man. Um, but yeah. It was fun nonetheless, but uh, thank you for coming on. I do appreciate you, man. Uh, and we'll have to have you on come uh, the autumn tour when everything switches and the yeah. teams, well, come, come north and we'll have to see how that is. Uh, definitely have to talk to you about Millennium Stadium. That's one of those like Valhalla's. I've been to Eden Park. I've been to Ellis Park. I would love to go to Twickenham and Millennium. You've been to both. Which one do you prefer? It's it's got to be Cardiff, man. Principality is it's is, is it called? Is, is that is that what Millennium is called now? Is it called? It's yeah. It used to be. I don't know why they swapped it. To be honest, um, probably but, yeah. Millennium Principality. It's Principality now, but Millennium was such an iconic name. <laughs> D- did but, you go to the concert the other night? No, but even then, I was telling my 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 mother about it today. Of it, how good it looked. It did look tidy. Um, but yes. that's good and she was talking Welsh to everyone. So for like Welsh people, that's awesome. I I'm not a fan of the music. That's teeny bop. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a, a Tay oh, fan, like, but <laughs> something I forgot to mention here. Did you see my take on Luis Re Samet? I heard you talk about him the other day. It's but... the most popular video I've done. I don't um, sure. He'll be back. Don't worry. He'll be back. He'll be back. Soon, I agree. Man. I agree. I don't yeah. want to bad mouth him. Um, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm just waiting for Taylor to show up to training camp because you know they're going to get a photo together. Oh, yeah. Because they play for the same team, don't they? The, uh, her and the boyfriend. Kelsey. Right. Travis Kelsey. Yeah. It's, um, I just, there are rugby players that can make it to position he wants to play. He's a six foot three white running back. That's, Running backs are 5'8", 5'9", 5'10", at the most. They're not. He's too tall. It's a skill position. He'll be back. I don't, I'm don't. i not knocking him for trying. Go ahead. Go try. No, I, I completely agree. I, I think he's doing. He's young enough. Do it. If you want to do that, do it. Fine. Um, but I do think he'll be back. I yeah, don't think. Uh, he's letting these younger guys get a chance. Let them get a chance. Because yeah. you know he's going to come back and be just fine. He will be just yeah. fine playing rugby. Um. And that's, I kind of tried to convey that and a lot of people got really upset with me about that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like he's going to be back. He'll be back playing rugby in no time. So, uh, but once again, thank you for coming on and I appreciate it. Uh, And uh, yeah, give this guy a follow. I'll leave the link underneath guys. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Uh, Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Cheers, man. Thank you very much.